stability in my life soon. She actually said the word soon. So now what I can say is in a few months both things happened now because in you know one month after that I got my first class degree. I always told my dad, why could you not have been more specific? Why didn't you say, you know, become millionaire before 25 or something like that? <laughs> My dad was too much, you know, thinking about root causes. Like, but anyway, my mom, you know, <laughs> didn't ask for me to, you know, get interested in, in marriage. She just asked, you know, this husband soon. So, and, and I believe God, God made it happen. Seriously. So that's that's the that's what I believe to be the truth. However, the, the practical side is that um, I think I'm a decisive person. Okay, the people in front here would disagree because. I don't, you know, can't decide restaurants, whatever, but I think that in major things in my life, I'm very decisive. Small things in my life, I'm not decisive. And I think I just attract decisive people. Mm. So you must yourself, you must yourself be confident and decisive, and I think you will attract such people. Mm. <laughs> But you know, I will tell you this, you know, men will always try to get away without being a proposal. They will kind of assume that you both know that you're going to get married. So never let them get away with that. You just say, oh, I was never proposed to, you know, I didn't know that we were getting married. So you must force a proposal out of him. Never get cheated on a proposal. <laughs> your base um, before you move forward. So this year for ethos is about solidifying <coughs> the basics. So when, what I, I mean by that is that a lot of things that, well, some things that you can take for granted in an Accenture, like the knowledge exchange system, you know, it's very important for us if we expand regionally and obviously it's something that we have to build so that people can access the knowledge base regardless of where they sit. Yeah, so building blocks like that we must have first before we expand, because if you expand before you have these you know, systems and, and, and enablers in place, then you can't ensure consistent quality of delivery across your projects. So the short answer is yes, um, and, and there's a way to do that, and we are essentially partnering with um, firms which may have um, industry expertise, you know, and therefore use that industry expertise to grow, you know, uh, cross -border, to do cross-border type projects, but may not have general consulting expertise to actually tie everything together and translate. Because I know, you know, we work with this sort of people who have very deep industry expertise before, and you know, the, the type of consulting that they do is to have, you know, an hour-long conversation with the client and say the solution is obvious. You have to do this, but that one sentence, you know, translating it into a meaningful implementation plan for the client, is actually going to take months. Yeah, so that's that's where we come in, and you know, with um, you know, this complementary capabilities, you know, we are able to offer a uh, solid value proposition to clients. So I'm not taking too long to answer your question. The short answer is yes, but probably next year. Yeah. Yes, I know. <laughs> okay, um, I've got two questions. I think the first one is uh, regarding, uh, like you said, the statistics, like there's only like 30% of women mm -hmm. in Malaysia, and mm -hmm. that is by far the most shocking you know, statistic I've heard so far. Uh, because of the fact that you know, we keep hearing that 70% that of you know, graduates, graduates yes. are from in Malaysia. So uh, my question is, is there enough being done in corporate Malaysia now to make it um, reasonable for women to work? Uh, in the sense like, like she mentioned, like you know, having babies and I mean, all that. Um, and also the environment as well, like, uh, 
I think it's also wishes like the woman on top will want to suppress the woman on the bottom or uh, really? so things like that. I don't know. Uh, and the second question is, I think uh, interestingly you mentioned about um, the trend of males uh, in you know uh, dominating the corporate nation, mm -hmm. but also on a personal level, like how do you find males are supportive for women to be in the workforce? Ah, okay. And also, so, so when you say male, you mean male colleagues and male colleagues bosses and or husbands. And husbands. Ah, and okay. also, <laughs> husband like control of what's the problem? So, and also, yeah, can you guys? And also, like you say, stroking the ego, and ah, but okay. at the same time, making them recognize your intelligence. Ah, okay. Oh, <laughs> she's a very smart woman. Okay. Um, the short answer to your first question is that. You really need to address the issue of affordable, high quality childcare in Malaysia. Yeah. So, if most women's, most people's income, most families' income is in that region that you saw just now, yeah, the, the bottom 80 percent, then most people are not going to be able to afford, you know, these places that cost 500 ringgit, 600 ringgit a month, um, where you get decent ratio between adults and kids, and you end up with very poor. Solutions like sending your kid to the neighbor and paying 80 ringgit a month, and your kids get sick a lot. You know, they, they I mean, there, there are a lot of issues. Um, if, yeah, I think that, this is my personal view, I think that the Ministry of Women should do more about accrediting uh, childcare centers so that we make sure that all of them operate to a minimum, at least hygiene level, right? hygiene level. And, you know, train childcare providers and whatnot. Um, you know, in corporations, I think, are already starting to have sort of in-house, uh, yeah, places. Uh, so the short answer is not enough um, can be done. And by making it more difficult for people to get maids and all that, it's really not helping things. Mm. Um, so your second question is, uh, so it's more specifically, your second question is how do I find do I find the men to be supportive of women in the workforce on how to get them to appreciate you? Okay, this is not. Let me change it. And am I level easy? Yeah? <laughs> when. <laughs> um, what I have observed, this is a gross generalization, and we, I, I can name, as I say this, I can name many uh, exceptions, but the gross generalization is that as, as men become more senior, I noticed that they lose the ability to do stuff themselves and to actually think at a detail level. Yeah, so men at a very senior level don't know how to do board papers, financial models, charts, or anything themselves. Whereas women, while having the ability to delegate, still know how to do those things themselves from scratch, not kind of based from scratch, if they have to do it. Um, Therefore, um, because, you know, if you follow my model of always over-delivering and being over-qualified for what you do, whatever, the men around you will surely, surely very much appreciate you. Um, you just have to know how to use that. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely. <laughs> yes. Um, my name is Shabimai. Please don't penalize me for the last answer. Um, I have the last question. How yeah. do you envision the future of Malaysia and specifically to achieve our mission training review? Having said all the data that you see and the charts were shown, mm. it looks like you mentioned earlier we are in a deep shit. Mm. Um, <laughs> we just have nine years left to, to, mm. to achieve that. And uh, lastly, as opposed to the lady in a green scout saying, I disagree. Uh, because I think male make um, male bosses or your male colleagues they make the best in the macro managing as opposed to ladies they are good in micro managing so I think it's more on creation of balance between these two and neither of the gender is actually <coughs> coupling uh, um, to each other so it's more more on the balance and it's not that I don't um, agree that women micro manage and the uh, to, say, to suggest that women are actually uh, thinking that the male is not actually supporting them at workplace, I think um, it's actually how you react, 
how you react and how you actually agree with oh, Actually, I started to question. Yeah. I don't think her, uh, her point or my point is about male being unsupportive. On the contrary, I actually find that men, certainly of all my male colleagues, male clients, are actually more forgiving of you being a woman and having a family, whatever, because you know they kind of are conscious of the fact that they have their wives to do all this for them, whereas you have to work for them and do all these things. So they're kind of very forgiving. Whereas uh, if you work for a lady boss, she will have this mindset, well, if I can do it, why can't you do it? Yeah, so that's the thing. So, the, the however, men, and this is true of work, this is true of relationships, have a tendency to take women for granted. You must never allow that, is, what is my message. But the question on how do I envision the future of Malaysia? Um, wow, I don't have a crystal ball, but... Um, honestly speaking, I think a lot depends on the outcome of the election and the extent of the mandate that the government gets and whether they feel that they have a strong enough mandate to push through real changes as opposed to just tinkering in size. Good example is we've never really reformed government. We have a lot of redundant functions, we have a lot of functions that are no longer relevant, where we choose to no longer allocate development funding against those programs, but yet we still keep all those people employed, they don't have much to do. You know, as we will tell you, our government departments where we serve, where they actually play ping pong, you know, things like that. So, um, we need serious restructuring and reform. Are they courageous enough to do that? Are they courageous enough to actually allow experienced hires into government as opposed to this, you know, PTD scheme where you know, the whole employment of civil services controlled by Suranjaya, what? SPA, Suranjaya, Primantan Awam. So, yeah, so it depends on the outcome of the upcoming elections. So I guess the key is decisive, uh, or the enablers here is actually the political will, will a part of social and economy. Absolutely. So would you predict any change of government? Will actually <laughs> transform this? He knows. Fridas knows the answer to this question. I don't know. <laughs> um, do I predict a change? I don't. Come on, like, nobody can predict a change in government. I mean, you know, we are all hopefully going to vote, and you know, you have as good guess as I do in terms of the voting tendencies. But I really don't know. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know first. I'm conscious of the time. Can we? Uh, but then, since you came up, can we make your question short? Yes, hi, I'm Willy. Early on, I saw that one of your slides you mentioned that only 3% of the ideas got into commercialization stage. No, no, not into commercialization. 10% got into commercialization, 3% profit generating. What happened to the 97%? Okay. What went wrong for them? Um, so, from 100%, I said only 10% went into commercialization, meaning 90% weren't commercialized. So the technologies are essentially they're sitting on the shelves, and they are the the this organization that I don't want to name is essentially still promoting it and still trying to get um, companies to license it. Um, and then of the of the 10% that have been commercialized, um, some have decided to abandon the project, um, and some are in a way still being incubated. They are potentially in the revenue generation stage, but not yet profit generating. Maybe in pink. Yeah, hi. Um, I just want to ask, um, just now you mentioned the fact that uh, we should do something that we are overqualified for. Oh, yeah, it's really the, good at. Yeah, the key is that, like, how do you get yourself to this point where you are uh, overqualifying for something? Like, I mean, when you do something too often, isn't that like a piece of cake and you get bored eventually, but how do you come to this point and how do you indulge yourself and keep doing the same thing and still... I like this question. So, um, I suppose I'm in consulting, so it's easy. Every project is different and has a different facet to it. So, while my core capability of strategy development, you know, and all the core skill sets is you know, is being honed, you know, all the time. Um, there is enough diversity in what we do that I don't actually get bored. Mm. So join consulting. <laughs> <laughs> all women should join consulting, I think, because you have the ability to be good at it while still getting enough diversity. And it's in a type of industry where if you demonstrate, if you build credibility, you can actually manage your time quite freely. 
That seems to be the conclusion here. So, uh, what you have been through to get to be overqualified is just the practice that you do. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, I think that's pretty much it because I am my Thank you so much, Mr. Thank you for your advice. I'm sure all of us are really inspired by her personal um, stories and also about uh, all of the information that she's imparted upon us tonight. But I just like to quickly sum up. I think the main point of her um, presentation for tonight is about balance. I think uh, realistically, there is no such thing as you know, women conquering or men conquering. It's all about cooperation, not just in your personal relationship, but also for the country. And I like to um, believe that the people here today can prove her wrong that we are not going to be in deep shit ten years onward. Are you all guys all for all for the challenge? Yes. I hope so. <laughs> So before we leave, uh, I'd like to invite uh, Farhana to give a token of appreciation to Ms. Natasha for spending her precious time tonight with all of us. Please welcome.